Alan. Uh, I came yesterday from Finland, and I want to show everyone a new side of UX where things are evolving nowadays in multiple different sectors. And I come from actually space industry. So one of the reasons why I came down to India was to showcase that there is multiple different sides of UX that hasn't been explored in multiple different industries so far. And uh, I'll give a little intro about myself, my background. So I did my MS in UX from TUT, which is a university in Finland. Uh, while I was doing my UX, I realized most of the things were very complicated. So I did a master's in psychology in HCI from UTA, which was a part in Finland and Sweden. So uh, after completing my studies, I started two companies. One was in Prague called Let's UXify, and the other one, uh, UX Solutions, based in Prague and Copenhagen. So after working quite a bit, uh, with different Central European markets and different places, I realized I need to explore more like different sides of UX. So now currently I'm working as a UX strategist for satellite systems and operation in Finland. So I would like to show you a video, which is basically the introduction of ISAI. What would you do with actionable information about every square meter on Earth, updated every single hour? The world currently faces three key problems around Earth observation data. Reliability, timeliness, access. The ISI radar satellite constellation is here to change the way we look at our world from space. Radar imaging makes it possible to see through clouds and even under total darkness. Governments and businesses can now look at their locations of interest 24-7. The ISI satellite constellation provides you with new images of the same location up to every hour. Tracking all the various changes that happen even within individual days is finally possible. To make better decisions, you need to have the right information at the right time. ISI provides easy and flexible access to Earth observation data. ISI, every square meter, every hour. So this was a bit of introduction about my company and what we do. Even though we build satellites and we launch satellites for Earth observation, our target as a company is not to be branded as a space organization or a space agency. We actually provide data for people to make better decisions worldwide. And the other reason is that we are kind of focused more on providing answers to people. And all of this requires uh, interfaces and UI and all these things, even the spacecraft operations, like how do you manage satellites, organizing constellations, all these require multiple different interfaces. So uh, before I get into that, we actually launched a first satellite from ISRO in India in PSLV and which was a world record as we launched the first microsatellite under 100 kilograms uh, with SAR capability. And that's the image of X1, which we launched from India this January. And these are some of the images from our mission from X1. So this is an image of Singapore, and this is how a radar image basically looks like. This is Mumbai. And this is something special I brought for Bangalore, which is taken from space recently. So why UX is so important inside a space industry? One of the reasons is that we want to achieve infallible interfaces, because every single mistake, every single error can cost you a lot of money or else time, which basically works with uh, different kind of systems, different kind of data, and machine learning as well. We also need a lot of clarity when the operators or other people are actually working on satellites or mission control systems. Every single interface that we design or we work with uh, any kind of satellite systems, everything has to be modular because you're working with a large set of data and visualization and you need to have multiple different screens. 
So modular interfaces is one of the key elements to any of our research and how we progress things. And also graphical integrity. So satellite produces a lot of data that you day to day you need to analyze to maintain the satellites, to see the health of the satellite, the battery. There are many other informations that come from it. So all these needs to be visualized in some certain form that it could be understood very clearly. You cannot have room for errors. So that's one of our images from a mission operation center in Finland. As you can see, there are multiple different screens and multiple different interfaces where every single person who works there works in like multiple different shifts. And they all have very tedious jobs to look at the screen all the time, see everything is correct. So these interfaces need to be crafted in a very special way, keeping the human mind and everything in place. So there's a difference between mission critical software systems and mere model systems. So a lo lot of reasons was that when you think of UX, you think of brand marketing, designing for end users, designing for uh, different companies like application websites and different things. One of the reason why we have this mission critical approach is because all the people who work with these systems, they need to have a very high level of knowledge working on specialized systems as well. And the screens are very information dense. You cannot provide spaces properly. The other reason is all these hardware configurations and everything is only decided to solve one purpose, which is operations. So in multiple different sectors, let's say if you're working in a business sector and you move into a government sector or a defense sector, or if you move into a marine time industry or something, your mind should always work in a way that you can adapt to different challenges. The other thing is you should always be detail oriented, but you should always see the bigger picture. Never miss out on any specific details or anything. The other thing I preach a lot is having an open door policy, which means that even as a UX specialist or strategist or designer, you should be able to educate other people what's your process. So me currently as a UX specialist, I go and talk to mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, I, I talk to uh, assembly testing engineers regarding the satellite. I sit and get my hand dirty sitting with the satellite, learning more and more things every day. Because even as a person, if you work in a company, you should educate every single people how you actually do and what you do and how you can achieve certain things. It's not just about delivering something or achieving some kind of result out of it. The other thing is, even as a UX specialist, you should always understand the software or the system behind it. So you should all keep learning different architectures, different languages. It doesn't have to be, you have to be really perfect in languages or anything, but you should understand how languages work and how you can design an architect as well. And the other reason is everybody works with data here pretty much, even if it's a branding industry or if it's a marketing, any kind of industry deals with data. As a UX person, you should understand the origin of the data and the end result of the data and the entire process and flow of each and every data that we take care of a lot. So thank you and best wishes from ISAI family and Finland. Thank you.